Hello doctors, I hope everyone is doing great. Welcome to Easy Medicine. In this video, we will discuss Medicine 1 past papers for final year MBBS. Before starting, it is better to have an overall view. So here I have provided you with distribution of marks for Medicine Paper 1. In this video, we will discuss Hematology and Oncology section of Medicine Paper 1. And as you can see, you will have one question from this topic in your final exam. Before starting, I would like to tell you that you will see a blue box in right corner of your screen with every answer. This will provide you with page number of Davidson's book of medicine from where the answer is taken. I have done this so that you can authenticate the answers yourself and be sure that these answers are accurate. For the purposes of this video, reference page numbers are from 22nd edition of Davidson's book of medicine. For your ease, I have grouped those questions which have similar diagnosis, so you might see two questions at a given time. Let's begin. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer it before we discuss it together. Very good, so the answer is megaloblastic anemia. And as I have discussed in my previous videos that students mainly struggle with reaching a diagnosis, so some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are malaise, weakness and shortness of breath, pallor, smooth tongue and angular chylosis and investigations will show low hemoglobin and increased MCV and peripheral blood film will show red blood cells that are larger and oval in shape. Presence of neurological features as seen in the first scenario such as paresthesias of hands and feet and absent ankle jerks indicate that megaloblastic anemia is due to B12 deficiency. Let's see the answer. As you can see the answer is megaloblastic anemia. The questions also asked about initial investigations and abnormalities that you will find in these investigations. So investigations done in this type of anemia are complete blood count which will show low hemoglobin, increased MCV and decreased red blood cell, white blood cell and platelet count. Peripheral blood film can also be done which will show oval macrocytosis and hypersegmented neutrophils. Hypersegmented neutrophils are those neutrophils which have 6 or more nuclear lobes. And as you can see, red cells are larger and oval in shape and neutrophils have 6 or more lobes, indicating that this peripheral blood film is taken from a patient of megaloblastic anemia. The second question also asks that how will you differentiate between two causes of megaloblastic anemia? First, we need to know that two main causes of megaloblastic anemia are folate deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency. And differentiating point between these two are that no neurological findings will be seen in folate deficiency, while B12 deficiency will have neurological findings such as paresthesias and loss of ankle jerks, as I discussed earlier. The second differentiating point is that autoantibodies are absent in folate deficiency, while autoantibodies are present in B12 deficiency. The autoantibodies present in B12 deficiency are anti parietal cell antibodies and anti intrinsic factor antibodies and among these two anti-intrinsic factor antibodies are more diagnostic. And the next point is low serum folate levels in folate deficiency and low blood B12 levels in B12 deficiency. The last differentiating point between folate deficiency and B12 deficiency is levels of methylmalonic acid are normal in folate deficiency while these levels are increased in B12 deficiency. The question also asked about neurological complications. And remember that whenever neurological features are present in a patient of megaloblastic anemia, it indicates B12 deficiency. And these neurological complications are collectively termed as subacute combined degeneration of cord, which is characterized by loss of vibration sensations, proprioception, and upper motor neuron damage signs. Apart from degeneration of cord, other neurological complications include optic atrophy, dementia, and autonomic neuropathy. The second question also asks that which micronutrient will you replace first if the cause of megaloblastic anemia is not clear. So if the cause is not clear, both folic acid and B12 are given together, as giving folic acid alone will worsen neurological deficit. However, B12 can be given to a patient without worsening of symptoms. But in usual clinical practice, both folic acid and B12 are given together to a patient of megaloblastic anemia. The question also asks that which drug will you give to the patient? So the drug which should be given to a patient of megaloblastic anemia with neurological signs is hydroxycobalamin 1000 microgram intramuscular for 6 doses 2 to 3 days apart, followed by maintenance therapy of 1000 microgram every 3 months for life. And you need to remember the doses of this drug because the question asks that how will you give this drug? And here is the reference page number from where the answer is taken. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the questions and try to answer before we discuss them together. 
Very good. So the diagnosis is multiple myeloma. And some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are back pain and recurrent urinary and respiratory tract infections and increased ESR, blood urea, serum creatinine, serum calcium and total protein. Normally albumin is higher than globulins but in a patient of multiple myeloma concentration of globulins is higher than albumin. Let's see the answer. As you can see the answer is multiple myeloma. The question also asked about investigations. So the investigations are bone marrow aspiration. This is the diagnostic test for multiple myeloma. As presence of more than 30% of plasma cell in bone marrow sample is diagnostic for multiple myeloma. And as you can see in this picture, plasma cells are increased in bone marrow sample. The second investigation is plasma and urine protein electrophoresis. And as you can see in the graph, it will show increase in gamma globulins. Normally, the peak of gamma globulins is similar to alpha and beta globulins. But in a patient of multiple myeloma, gamma globulins are increased. The next investigation is X-rays for skeletal survey, which will show lytic or lucent lesions. And as you can see in this X-ray of skull, lytic lesions are present. And the next investigation is measurement of serum calcium, blood urea and creatinine. The next part of the question asked about four causes of renal failure, which are paraprotein deposition, hypercalcemia, infections or amyloid deposition. And the last part of the question asked about drugs which can be used in this illness. These drugs are thalidomide, bortezomib, and bisphosphonates. And here is the blue box with reference page number of the Wisconsin Book of Medicine from where the answer is taken. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question, and try to diagnose before we discuss it together. Very good. So the diagnosis is hemolytic anemia. Remember that a combination of decreased hemoglobin, increased reticulocyte count, increased indirect bilirubin, and positive urinary urobilinogen indicate hemolytic anemia. Let's see the answer. See here the answer is hemolytic anemia. The second part of the question asked about causes of hemolytic anemia due to autoantibodies and the causes are SLE, chronic lymphocytic leukemia and medicines such as methyl dopa and cancers for example thymoma and lung cancer. The question also asked about peripheral blood picture of hemolytic anemia. So the findings on peripheral blood film will depend upon underlying cause. For example, sickle cell will be seen in patient of sickle cell anemia, spherocytes will be seen in patients of hereditary spherocytosis or autoimmune hemolysis, and fragmented red cells are seen in microangiopathic hemolysis. The last part of the question asked about treatment. And treatment begins with seizing exposure to or treating the underlying cause, administration of corticosteroids, and splenectomy in cases where spleen is involved in removal of red cells such as autoimmune hemolysis or hereditary spherocytosis, and prophylaxis with folic acid since patient of hemolytic anemia can develop folate deficiency. And here are the reference page numbers of division from where the answer is taken. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer before we discuss it together. Alright, since the diagnosis is given within the scenario, so some important points which can lead you towards aplastic anemia are shortness of breath, pallor, and bleed from gums and nose. And investigations will show pancytopenia which is characterized by low hemoglobin, low platelet, and low white blood cell count. The most important point which can lead you towards aplastic anemia is hypocellular bone marrow. Let's see the answers. Since the question asked about how will you assess the severity of aplastic anemia, so severity of aplastic anemia is assessed based on blood counts and bone marrow examinations. The next part of the question asked about management, and as every management, it will begin with history and physical examination, followed by investigations. And investigations include complete blood count, which will show pancytopenia, ESR, CRP, and bone marrow aspiration. The last investigation is diagnostic for aplastic anemia and it will show hypocellular marrow as I discussed earlier. The last step of the management is treatment and treatment begins by stopping exposure to drugs and toxins which are responsible for aplastic anemia and providing blood products such as packed red cells or platelets transfusions as needed, treatment of underlying infections, young patients are treated by giving hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Older patients are treated with immunosuppressants such as cyclosporin and anti-thymocyte globulin. The last part of the question asks that what conditions does aplastic anemia evolve into? So the conditions in which aplastic anemia can evolve into are proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, 
myelodysplastic syndromes and acute myeloid leukemia. And here is the blue box with reference page numbers from Davidson's from where this answer is taken. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to diagnose before we discuss it together. Good, so the diagnosis is acute lymphoblastic leukemia and some points which can indicate you towards this diagnosis are a young patient with recurrent fever or infections along with pallor and bleeding from the gums or bleeding into the skin causing purpura. Let's see the answers. As you can see, the answer is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The next part of the question asked about investigations and investigations are complete blood count which will show low hemoglobin and low platelets, peripheral blood film which will show blast cells, and bone marrow examination which is also diagnostic in the case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And further classification of acute lymphoblastic leukemia can be done by chromosomal and molecular analysis such as karyotyping and flow cytometry. The last part of the question asked about treatment options and they include specific therapy. This involves administration of chemotherapeutic drugs for induction of remission followed by maintenance of this remission. And supportive therapy which involves treatment of anemia with packed red cells, bleeding with platelet transfusions, infections with antibiotics, fluid and electrolytes imbalance with intravenous hydration and finally hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And here are the reference page numbers of Davidson. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer before we discuss it together. Very good, so the diagnosis is chronic myelogenous leukemia. And some important points to diagnose this are shortness of breath, weight loss, fever and pallor with no lymphadenopathy on examination and laboratory findings of decreased hemoglobin and increased total leukocyte count with increased fraction of neutrophils. Remember that in chronic myelogenous leukemia, fraction of neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils are all increased. Let's see the answer. Here as you can see the diagnosis is chronic myelogenous leukemia. The next part of the question asked about two causes of enlarged spleen and they are myelofibrosis and polycythemia vera. The second part of the question asked about chromosomal abnormality present in this condition and that is Philadelphia chromosome which results from reciprocal translocation between chromosome 9 and 22. The last part of the question asked about drug treatment and curative treatment. So the drug treatment involves administration of BCR ABL tyrosine kinase inhibitors such as imatinib or nilotinib. These drugs are first-line treatment for chronic myelogenous leukemia. Curative therapy involves allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And here are the reference page numbers of Davidson. Let's read the next question. Please stop the video here, read the question and try to answer before we discuss it together. Very good. So the diagnosis is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. And some important points to diagnose this are menorrhagia, purpura over the forearms and blood examination revealing normal counts except for low platelets. Remember that two important findings to diagnose this condition are normal blood examination except for low platelets and increased megakaryocytes on bone marrow examination. Let's see the answer. As you can see, the answer is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. The next part of the question asked about findings on bone marrow examination. And as I discussed before, bone marrow will show increased megakaryocytes. The last part of the question asked about short-term and long-term treatment. Short-term treatment involved administration of prednisolone and intravenous immunoglobulins. And the long-term treatment is splenectomy. And here is the blue box with reference page numbers from the Wisner's Book of Medicine from where the answer is taken. And this finishes our discussion on hematology and oncology section of Medicine Paper 1. Before ending this video, I'm sharing with you some bonus MCQs. These MCQs are made from some really important material. You can solve these MCQs by stopping the video and writing your answers in comments below. I'll share the answers to these MCQs in a comment below after a week of uploading this video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can benefit with these past papers as well. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for upcoming past paper videos. Good luck.